Good morning, my dear students. Uh, welcome back to this virtual online class of Appa Public School. I am your social science teacher, uh, Paulson Samson. Hope you all remember me, right? Uh, a long time. Good to see you back. And uh, the chat session is on, so you can chat. Already, many of you uh, wish me good morning. Good morning. Someone said hi, sir. Hello, sir. Okay, good. There are a few names. Okay, so now today, so from I'm gonna start a new chapter from the history side. It's grade eight. Grade eight history. Uh, in the textbook, uh, it's the chapter number seven, right? So, but we have some of those chapters have been excluded. Right uh, from the portion. So just to shorten the portion, uh, as the like, uh, we didn't have those much duration, and as well as the uh, guidance from the CBSC board. So we have uh, it means we have excluded a few of the chapters. So in the textbook here, this chapter number is seven. So you can write accordingly how many chapters are there. Suppose this may be the chapter number five. Okay. So the name e of the chapter is it's a bit. It's weavers weavers iron smelters iron smelters and factory owners and factory owners and today the date is 22nd of december 2020 right okay so now the chat session is on so i can ask few questions so that you can reply right so can anyone tell me how many types of uh, cloths are there so which you wear or which you see at your home Types of cloths. You may have heard this cloth, that cloth. Can I have those names? Okay. Uh, chapter number four. Okay. Right. See, uh, Vinay Pujari, I have said some of the chapters we have excluded. Right. So, no need. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I have got the older one. Right. Okay. Then, so this will be the chapter number. Five, I suppose. Okay, right. Yes, thank you. Cotton, Sahid Ali Sheikh has a silk, Gauri Bhagli, silk, she has cotton, polyester, okay, cloths, Sudha Patil, synthetic cloths, okay, cotton, rayon, good, wool, yes, good, again, still, uh, synthetic cloths, okay, Shubhasa, Gangu Prasad, Sahid Ali, I suppose Sudha Patil is Priya Patil, uh, Gauri Bhagli, silk. Sharno Balganur, jute, good, good, jute, good. Okay, silk, uh, woolen cloths. Yes, so nowadays in winter, def definitely or you will be wearing those uh, woolen cloths, right? Nylon, silk cloth, cotton cloth. Okay, and again, still any more? Any more still? I'm missing. Okay, cotton, silk, nylon, woolen, Sangeeta Rathod. Okay, I suppose it is Krishika Rathod. Okay. Uh, Jalshri Reshmi, cotton, right. Okay. So now, again, when I ask you about the saris, my dear student, saris. So can you tell me a few of the sari names which is available in India or if she is at home? Saris, saris. Now leave the cloths. Okay. I'm just coming to particular saris. The particular sari have particular names, right? Girls will answer, I suppose, the more. Saris, the saris your mother wore or you wore. Okay. Ilkal, okay. Ilkal, the name. I will write here Ilkal. Okay. Ilkal. Good. Ilkal is the one name. Okay, silk. Okay, Kanchi Varam. Kanchi Varam. Uh, Ilkal was given by Sharno Balaknur. Okay, Kanchi Varam. Sayyad Ali Sheikh. Kanchi Varam. Okay. Kanchi Varam. Again, I want to name. Ilkal is silk sari. Okay, silk. Okay, silk sari. Ah, yes, again. 
सॉफ्ट सिल्क सर पॉलिस्टर सारी पॉलिस्टर कांचीवरम अगेन आई हैव ऑन फ्यू ऑफ द नेम्स ऑफ द सारीज यू कैन आस्क योर मदर और सिस्टर देयर कॉटन क्लॉथ्स ओके नाइलॉन कांचीपुरम सारी अगेन सम ऑफ यू नेम्स आई नीड आई नीड फ्यू मोर नेम्स डू प्लीज कम ऑन फास्ट हरी अप रेयन पॉलिस्टर इल्क सिल्क कॉटन इल्कल सारी रेयन अगेन अगेन silk okay the name is repeating don't repeat those name repeated sarees think some different ask your mother at home hope so she may help your sisters or from the father okay uh, satin saree okay surat saree surat has got a name okay nylon cotton satin yes cotton silk polyester okay one more one more name sangeeta rathod has given banaras banaras saree okay or banarsi right okay good manarsi sari okay vinay pujari gango prasad kani uh, gadwal sari yes good gadwal sari okay and again okay 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 now you know fine let's okay now let's uh, get back to the topic why i am asking you about these uh, like the types of clothes and also specially about the sari's name right why because it starts with our chapter the, the first topic is weavers it's we was those who weave the clothes so now this chapter specially deals or explores about the two major uh, industries you can say the one is the cloth it's the textile and another one is about the iron and steel so here it uh, the about the india's rich and traditional cust uh, custom of this uh, weaving the dress or uh, weaving the cloth okay on different types of cloths and again about the art of smelting right about the uh, this iron smelters in india okay so now the crafts and industries of india during the british rule focused on two industries that is one is the textile that is the weaving and another one is the iron and steel okay just uh, bargav the baby tiger uh, tan from west bengal good okay okay tan good name good it's tant or tant okay tant from west bengal kasavu from i suppose this answer might be from the google bargav okay bomkai from odisha sambalpuri from odisha uh, paithini from maharashtra bandani from gujarat okay muga from assam yes okay he has given trade good rashmi but right okay so these are those some of those plots which have been made in india okay so now let's come back okay now see here industrialization of britain had a close connection uh, with the conquest and colonization of india right so now again with the growth of industrial production british industrialists began to see india as a vast market for their industrial products and over the years manufactured goods from britain began flooding india right so now again when we go back to the indian textile so now in india uh, it's not only we, we have making the clothes maybe after the uh, uh, advent of the britishers but it's from the ancient civilization we can see we were very much famous and our clothes which were made in india were been through throughout the world it has been passed on or it has been uh, the trade was carried between many of those countries they came to india and they carried our cloth so now there are many types of clothes so now for example if i take uh, this the name the first name ilkal it's a saree right ilkal saree it's a very famous saree right in the karnataka or also throughout the world. india also you can sometimes the world also is because why this saree name is ilkal because it is made in a place right it has originated from a place called ilkal right now ilkal is a place and now when we say kanchipuram saree so now this kanchipuram is silk saree right so this kanchipuram is also kanchivaram saree it's a place right this saree specially made there and hence hence is got the name kanchivaram again the silk banarsi good it's been made in the banaras okay and uh, gadwal saree definitely you have heard this right so these are those different how this particular cloth got the name it's from the place which it originated right like gadwal saree is the saree which originated like the particular type of saree the particular design or maybe the size the length the width and some of the arts so which will fall only in the gadwal saree so these are all different different sarees 
uh, originated at different different place hence they got their names right so now like this there are many of the scrolls which in india which has been uh, like been imported sorry exported from uh, from india to other countries a uh, trade was carried right so it was after the advent of the britishers that sorry after the advent of the europeans i can say because uh, in the year 1498 when vasco de gama came uh, and landed in calicut while going back along with the spices right he carried the cloth also to his uh, country so where the cloth uh, became uh, very famous and people were asking more and more the type of cloth right so hence that particular cloth which he carried to the portugal so it got a unique name right so now uh, now 1750 around and one more time uh, one more thing my dear students do please keep a notebook pen and do please jot down few of the points in your textbook right hope so and your questions will be answered only in the fcc that will be in the evening okay so just listen just answer only my queries okay my questions okay my dear students and do please carry a notebook a pen right and do please jot down few of the points which will be helpful for you in revising quickly see right now we are getting only of those many of those uh, questions right so on the online we are getting those uh, objective type or maybe true or false or maybe fill in the blanks so it will be very helpful for you right to revise quickly revise okay right so shadran has say yeah i don't want that yeah okay 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 sir okay sir is a good answer yes sir is a good answer right okay so now 1750 India was the world's largest producer of cotton textiles. Okay, now Indian textiles was renowned both for its fine quality and exquisite craftsmanship. Uh, in the 15th century, Europeans began buying Indian textiles for sale in Europe. Okay, so now this was the scenario of Indian textiles. Okay, tant or tanti is also a sari. So now these are those names which you have got it right. So do please make a note, or else you can find few of those names of those different different types of clothes. You can ask your parents, relatives, right? And kindly, if you want, you can make a note also of them. Okay. So now the first cotton cloth, right? So now European traders, apart from their spices, okay, they were also attracted to the cotton clothes. cotton and silk okay especially the cotton cloths okay so now let's see the name of those cloths which originated in india and it has been uh, famous throughout the world wherever it uh, been okay so now the first cloth then which i am writing is muslin muslin is a cotton cloth muslin is a cotton cloth so now this cloth is made in india originated in india so now how did this cloth particular cotton cloth got it names as muslin okay so now here the iraqis okay the iraq people right when they carry the cotton cloth to iraq so at that time iraq the particular place they carried it to mosul so now currently mosul is in iraq current currently it is in iraq so now this mosul now the people when they use, were using this cloth in mosul so they term that particular cloth as muslin right so iraq they are from the arab country right so iraq currently the country is also there and mosul the place is also there right so the when these iraqi traders when they encounter this fine cotton cloth and which they carried to mosul mosul it's a place right so as a result the, the particular cotton cloth they named it as muslin and that particular cloth in iraq was called as muslin so this is one of the story behind this cotton cloth this is also a cotton cloth okay and now the next one is calico c a l i c o by seeing the word calico by now when these iraqi traders okay well arab traders they finally when they encounter our it means they have met this or 
when they carried this particular Indian cotton cloth to Iraq at the name of the place, Mosul. So from the Mosul, the people were using this cotton cloth. So as a result of this, people started calling their particular cotton cloth as muslin. Right? Muslin. Okay. Now, Vinay Pujari has this Kaniko. Now, I have sent you about 1498. Who landed in India? Who was the first European, like the sailor? Who discovered the sea route to India? Who discovered the sea route to India? Can anyone say me the name? Simple question. Who discovered the sea route to India? Okay, Sayyadani Sheikh. Okay, Vasco Diga. Vasco Diga. Okay, Vasco Diga. Vasco Diga. Sopna Kotari. Okay, as the Sopna Kotari, I suppose it is Mayank. Right, Vasco Diga. Vasco Diga. Okay, so now, where did he land? Vasco Diga. In India, where did he land? Can anyone tell me the place? Vasco Diga. Where did he land in India? This was the Okay, Gangu Prasad Kanni has given. Okay, Calicut. Sayyad Ali Sheikh, you are wrong, not Surat. You are very much using the word Surat too much. Was Bodhigama landed in Calicut. Not a calculate. Someone said Gauri, Bagli. No. Kolkata, no. Okay, Calicut. So now, when they were going back, okay, okay, Calicut, Calicut. Calen now, Calicut is currently it's in the state of Kerala. Okay, so now when Vasgodi Gama was going back along with the spices, he carried the fine cotton cloths to Portugal, okay, to his native, to his uh, mother, motherland, okay, Vasgodi Gama. So the cloth which he carried from Calicut to his mother country, right, so there the people there started calling that particular cloth as Calico from Calicut, it's become Calico. Portuguese, okay, no, 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 Portuguese, okay, so now here I have a question. So, what are the citizens of Indian, uh, India are called? The citizens of India, what are they called? Citizens of India, what are they called? Anyone? The citizens of our country are called as Indians. Yes, the citizens of our country, they are called as Indian. Okay. So now, as like if they are from England, a citizen of England, they are called as English. Yes. As well as, so the like uh, France, what are the citizens of France? They are called as France, citizens of France. Citizens of France. What are they called as? What do you call them? Citizen of France. Citizen of France. Okay. Mayank has given the correct answer. Yes. French. Just like as uh, like the people of France are called as French. The citizens of Netherlands. Okay. What do you call the citizens of Netherlands? Okay. French. 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 Okay. French. French. Okay. What are the citizens of Netherlands called as? Can anyone answer? Citizens of Netherland. Citizens of Netherland. Anyone do not Google it. Okay, it's a very tricky one, right? So the citizens of Netherland are called as Dutch. D U T C H. The Dutch. Okay. As Vasco de Gama was from Portugal, he was a Portuguese. Someone has given right now. Someone has said that uh, Portuguese, right? He was from Portugal. It's Portuguese. P O R T U G U E S E. Portuguese. The citizens of Portugal are called as Portuguese, right? So it's Portuguese is not a country. Portuguese. The citizens of Portugal are called. Okay. So like oh, the Sri Lankan are called as Sri Lanka. Sri, Lanka, Sri Lankans. Don't know, sir. Don't type that word. Don't know, sir. Okay. It's not good. Negative one. All right. Okay. So now again coming back to Calico. So now Calico went to Portugal along with this was Vodigama. There the people started using the cloth and they called in the, the particular cotton cloth as Calico. Right? This was one of the cloth. And another one, we have this Calico from 
calicut okay right calico now next one more type of cloth we have it is chintz c h i n t z chintz now this chintz is also a cotton cloth cotton see all these muslin calico chintz right they are all basically cotton cloths cotton cloths okay so now why this chintz was famous so now because of the exquisite floral design and fine texture and relative cheapness cheapness calico from calicut chintz from china no chintz it's not from china my inquiry chintz is also the cloth originated in india so the hindi word chintz hindi word chintz c h h i n t chintz from the hindi word chintz it got the name chintz so now because of this cloth it was a floral design it has got floral design fine textures and well as it is because of the material also was available very cheaply right and one more highlight of this particular cloth the highlight okay so it says that the queen so now when i refer the word queen when we refer we indians the queen usually it refers to the queen of england or the queen of great britain you can call it is derived from hindi word chint okay anurag visaj ji the confusion one okay right chint queen victoria it's been said that queen victoria also or queen elizabeth also wore this cloth which is made by indians and that is the chintz cloth she used to wear this chintz cloth chintz okay so do please keep in mind a very important one right and now again we have one more type of cloth it's called the b a n d a n n a okay so now this one also was a cotton cloth but it was brightly colored and printed scarf usually people used to make them as a scarf right this cloth bandana bandana or it is been derived from the yes 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 she okay yes my daughter yes she used to wear the clothes basically from the indian origin yes okay it was made in india and it was exported to britain okay so now this bandana it means derived from the hindi word bandana bandana means bandana means tying bandana means tying right you will tie the friendship band right so now you got your got band so you just put it in the wrist right but the raksha bandhan if you have seen no they will tie right or maybe if you want to tie something you will tie your shoe dry your shoe laces right so this bandana is referred as the art of tying and then dyeing dyeing means it's to dry not to okay not that dye don't go for that dye right don't go for that khalas right bandana so this was also a brightly colored and printed scarf right so usually the word bandana means dyeing uh, sorry tying and dyeing yes t y and d y also d y e dye is there that's dyeing so here the word bandana tying okay colored and drying in a color is dyeing okay so my kodari right okay so now these are some of those clothes which are very much apart from this uh, like see now the demand of indian cloth was too much and and see the if you have a textbook i will show you the textbook all right so you can see this particular page number 51 okay so here it is uh, okay so you can see this uh, student my dear student you can see this like you can see here the particular here it is the the name of the cloth the particular kind of cloth and the orders and the orders also they have mentioned so at that moment uh, the order okay at that moment the order was about 589000 pieces 589000 pieces orders were there at that time in india so which were sent to which were sent to the european country or european market you can see so now again 
one more highlight of this is uh, like each cloth. Okay, each cloth was. So I will just erase this. Each cloth uh, had a particular measurement. So it was made on a standard. Okay, standard type cloth it was there. So it has a particular size. It has a particular size. All the cloth which were uh, sent. Okay, it's fine like eighty nine thousand in the year, right? It was a very huge order. Okay, so now the cloth it was just I'm giving the length was twenty yard. Twenty yard. The length was twenty yard, and the width width was one yard. One yard. Hope you have come across this particular term yard. Y a r d a unit of measurement of length, right? So now here this yard. One yard is equal to y a r. One yard is equals to three feet. One yard. So now we can see. 60 feet and here it is 3 feet okay one so that was standard length of each clothes and do remember those all were hand woven they were made of the hands it was a handicraft you can say right all those because we didn't have those machines right still the uh, industrial revolution didn't started so indians were doing uh, preparing this manufacturing this clothes in bulk Right, that too in a hand woven, and many of these families, right? Many of those families, it's twenty yard, twenty into three, sixty, not one twenty. One yard is equal to three feet. Then twenty yard is equal to how much? It's three multiplied by two, sixty. Is it? Yeah. Is it sixteen to three? Okay, I'm not just saying this one. Don't take this one. I'm just making this one. Okay, sixteen to three, one eighty. You are giving this total area somewhat. I don't want all those things. Okay, so now I am now seeing this popularity or majority of the people. Okay, those who are doing farming or maybe working in plantation or doing any other business. Okay, they are doing any other for their livelihood. They just change their professions and again uh, started. manufacturing the clothes especially in the uh, the areas where this huge demand of all the clothes were there, right so we had silk clothes also there we had cotton clothes also there so we had many types of clothes which originated in india and has flourished uh, or passed on to the uh, all the countries you can see right especially the european market so now european in the european market also the indian clothes become very famous and now the like the clothes which were produced there in england or europe had not so much demand as compared to the indian clothes okay okay the next indian textiles right so after this we have this indian textiles in the uh, european market so now here comes the twist now in the year 1720 the british government enacted legislation banning the use of printed cotton textile chintz in england so now in the year 1720 so now there the producers of cloth in in england right so now they started to protest against the cloths which were been uh, imported by england in india from india they started to oppose because they the cloths which produced in england by those britishers so they were uh, not selling they did not have much demand so as a result all those manufacturers all those uh, industry orders right where the cotton the cloths they are prepared they started to oppose or uh, they wanted to ban the textiles uh, printed cotton textiles that is chintz in england it was in the year 1720 that the british government passed a uh, legislation banning the use of printed cotton textiles that is chintz in england okay so now this banning of this chintz cloth came to be known as calico act 
came to be known as Calico Act. Right? 1720, Chintz, it was banned and this act came to be known as Calico Act. Who banned? The British legislature, the British government. They enacted, they enacted this particular uh, policy like to ban the chintz cloth, it means the cotton textile in England. Okay, so now my dear students, so do please make a note, right? So you have to make a write it all the points in your book. Do whenever it's not only for the social class, for all the classes, it will apply, right? So that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Till then, goodbye.